Hi, my name's Stephen Hen. I'm running for Mayor of Ongapringa. Today I want to talk to you about Glenunga High School. And you're saying, why are we talking about Glenunga High School? Where is Glenunga? Good question, I didn't know this. So I'm going to show you on a map where Glenunga is. Now the average house price in Glenunga is $1.77 million. So $1.77, almost $2 million, which is generally a lot more than down south where we live, although there's some expensive houses on the Esplanade. But let's just talk about this school. This is an amazing school. Amazing. It should be the case of what all schools should be like in this state. Now I want to talk about the uh, net plan results first because this school, this is all from the annual report of 2021. Uh, the NAP plan proficiency for 2021 was 92%. Um, that's for literacy, for reading, for numeracy, 94%, which is amazing. And this is what we should expect from our schools, I think. Um, and we're going to get into more discussion about this. Um, now the results of this school, they have lots of results that you can look up online for this school because this school is obviously very proud of their results and what they achieve. Um, so, I'm sorry, I'll just get to this. Okay, so there are, sorry, there are 48% of the students get an A in this school. 48% get an A. Um, to me, that's amazing. So if you go to Glenunga High School, you've got a 50% chance of getting A's. That's amazing. Amazing. The ATAR distribution scores. Now, you generally don't see these in schools. So I'm like looking at schools down south and like trying to get like what's the ATAR distribution and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you go to Glenunga, 27% of the class, a little bit over 27, will get an ATAR higher than 95, which is amazing. 46% um, of the class will get an ATAR higher than 90. Um, so that's going to be combined of 73%. So 73% of the students who go to Glenunga are going to get an ATAR higher than 90. Amazing, amazing. This is why the schools are proud of their results. Um, now I want to talk about attendance at this school. Year 8, 95.6 attendance. Um, year 12, 92% attendance. Amazing attendances at this school. Um, how many kids from this school are going to leave and seek employment in South Australia? three out of over 400 obviously most are going to go to university um, we're going to talk a little bit about the teaching staff at this school because I think this is interesting um, there are 122 full-time equivalent teaching staff at the school there are 30 non-teaching staff at the school. So I try and keep that in perspective. Now the funny of the school is amazing. And what's amazing about this is how much the parental contribution is. So the school receives $20 million from the state government, which doesn't mean much because you're going to say, well, how's this compared to other schools? But I think it's going to be the same. The thing which is different is 3.1 million, 3 point, almost $3.2 million is given to this school by the parents. Now you're going to say, well, how does this compare, Stephen? It compares Brighton High School, 1.4 million, Christie's Beach High, 300,000. So if you go to Glenunga, your student is going to have an extra $3 million piled on them to help them improve their results. And their results are clearly improved. Um, to me, that is huge. Now I was speaking to a teacher today about this. And I was like, have you seen these results at some of these schools? And he said, well, look, Stephen, this is the way it is. If you, go to, if you come from a wealthier suburb, you're going to get better educational outcomes than a poorer suburb. And I'm like, well, that's not fair. How is that fair? How is it fair that a richer suburb gets more funding per student than a poorer suburb? 
and then the richer suburb has better educational outcomes. So if you're an intelligent student, and I'm not saying that, and I'm definitely not saying that um, in a poorer school you can't do well because you can, but I'm just talking statistically. So that 75% of the students going to the school are going to get an ATAR higher than 90%. Like, that's just crazy. Are you telling me that kids who go to, kids who come from a wealthy suburb are brighter than those that come from a less wealthy suburb? I do not believe that. I clearly do not believe that. Um, they might be getting more help. They might be having tutors. They might have, you know, they might have different programs in place. In fact, today I was, I was at a club and I was talking and one of the kids um, who I think, who I was shooting with, because I do archery, um, went to a local school down south. And he said, well, our school has kids who are going to go to university. I said, how many do you think? He goes, I don't know, but there's going to be a few. I said, what, four or five? He goes, yeah, maybe. Four, like, and he said, we've got kids doing advanced maths at our school. I was like, that's good. Like, I've got a maths degree. Like, that's good. And he goes, we don't have a teacher. What? What? You don't have a teacher? He goes, they study by a computer. So... We're going to compare Glenunga, who clearly would have a maths teacher helping the kids, to another school down south who doesn't even have a maths teacher. And you expect the same outcomes at both schools? To me, we should have statistics. It's very important to have statistics so we can report on outcomes. To me, like whether I worked in health, social security, or wherever I worked in the public service, statistics are important to, to, to report on outcomes. Then, with, the, with that information, we should look at funding these schools to help the schools that, that need more help. Same as helping hospitals that need help. It amazes me that, that Glenunga, which is clearly an amazing school, is not used as a best practice, and then that applied to other schools. Now, the teacher I spoke to today said, look, you could take the teacher from one school and move to another and you wouldn't have a difference in outcome. I'm going to say yes and no. Now, when I studied at school, I had some amazing teachers. I had a teacher. I had one teacher. I'm going to get his name wrong. Um, it doesn't matter how hard I study, he was going to give me a C. It doesn't matter. That's the way it was going to be. But I had another teacher by the name of Mrs. Arnold. And I tell you, I read every book and I tried the hardest. I tried the hardest. I did so much research and she gave me an A for English. Now... Look, it was about effort. The other teacher I put no effort in because I was, I was assured he was going to give me a C. Doesn't matter how much work I put in, so I just wrote that subject off. I was like, I'll just concentrate on maths where I'm going to get my A's and I'll just write English off. So I wrote English off. I had to study English because my parents made me study English. Would have been better to study accounting, but that's another question. My parents forced me to do English. But it's outcomes. We report on these outcomes. We need to apply funding for it. I don't think it's fair when schools receive $3.8 million in funding where another school receives $300,000 in funding. Now you might say, well, that's fair enough because those parents contributed. And I'd say, well, have we created the Hungry Games where the wealthy suburbs create wealthy kids who create doctors and teachers and lawyers and the suburbs down south create create truck drivers and there's nothing wrong with being a truck driver I've got some very smart tertiary scores of 99.5 who are truck drivers nothing wrong with that but you should have a choice it's all about choice and it's all about equality you should have the choice to become a teacher to become a nurse to become a doctor to become a lawyer to become an accountant at every school in this state and I'm running for mayor down south and our schools are well below state average. So that's what I'm running on. Sklanunga, um, amazing, amazing school. I'm Stephen Han. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you.